Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Mr. Hunter, and this is your notes on electrostatics. So, um, we are now gotten through three energies, or three units, excuse me, um, which consists of kinematics, which is the study of how things move, dynamics, which is why they move, and uh, forces mainly. Then we've uh, just finished energy. And now we're on unit four out of six, which is um, electrostatics and electrodynamics. Uh, essentially, electricity is electrodynamics, and electrostatics you're going to start learning about today. So, um, I have provided you with a capture sheet, but you can also take these in your notes. Um, I'm hoping you're listening to this whole video. I've noticed that some of you are just scrolling to the end, and when you're doing problems and other stuff, uh, you have no idea what's happening because you haven't listened to the notes. But if you've listened this far, that means you're listening. So, charges. A charge, uh, hmm, it's elementary, my dear Watson. So, an elementary charge is basically the smallest unit of charge that we know that exists. There's actually smaller ones that we'll get into in modern physics, but this is what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So, one elementary charge, which we label as E, is... 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so um, this value is on the reference table, so that's a new unit for you guys. Coulomb is the unit of charge. Um, it is named after Coulomb, who did a lot of fundamental work figuring that out as well. So one elementary charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and this is a charge of an electron and a proton. So, as you can see here, the unit for charge is the coulomb. Get off the screen. Stop it. So, um, unit for charge is the coulomb, which equals 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charge. A coulomb is huge. Um, you really can't find a natural coulomb on Earth because that is a lot of charge. Um, as you can see, it's 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charges. So if you were to write that out, it would be 6250000000000000000000. As you can see, that's a lot of zeros. So um, that's why an electron is so small. You would need uh, however big number that is to have that many charges. So let's talk about what charges. There are two things inside of an atom, and charges relate um, partially to, to the atom, so we're going to get into some physics slash chemistry. So inside the nucleus of an atom is a proton, and as you have learned from uh, chemistry or other units, and even if you're like, I'm in pure chemistry, Mr. Hunter, this was taught in 7th and 8th grade. If you don't know what a proton is, wow, just wow. But a uh, proton is a positive charge. And it has an elementary charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The mass is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Um, and I'll get into class and how we actually know that and discovered that. Now, an electron has the exact same charge. Because if you think about it, um, the atom is neutral. It's not positive or negative. It's zero charge. And that's because there's an equal amount of electrons and a, an equal amount of protons. For example, an hydrogen atom has one electron and one proton. So uh, the charge on an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So they both have the same charge. Why? Because they balance out. But the charge of an electron is exactly the same, but it's negative, so it's equal and opposite. And as you guys notice, I can say, well, opposites do what? And they should hopefully know, well, opposites attract. And then like charges repel, um, and we'll get into why that actually is. Now, I want you to look at the mass. The mass of an electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. There is a huge difference. If you take negative 31 and subtract it from negative 27, you get a difference of 4, which means that 
the mass difference between an electron is proton is 10 to the fourth. Let's that write that out as a number. That's 10,000 times more massive. So the proton is 10,000 times more massive than electron. So this guy is 10,000 times more massive than this guy. And that makes sense. Why? Because if you've done any type of chemistry on any level, you know that electrons move. Protons don't. Basically, it's trying to say, here, Ant, move this human. Um, which, I don't know if that's an actual right scale. I'm going to have to mathematically check that out in terms of math. But, um, the proton is 10,000 times more um, massive than the electron. Since they have the same charge, whenever you have a proton next to electron, which is going to move? Hopefully you're saying the answer in your head. So it should be evident that the electron is going to move because it is 10,000 times less massive than a proton. So we never really say protons move. Can they move? Yes, uh, especially if we get enough of an electro, uh, electrostatic force going on. However, it's more likely that the proton, I mean the electron will be moving, excuse me. Okay. So now that we know about the basic of charges, I want to talk about something called conservation of charge. It's also very close and similar to conservation of energy and conservation of mo uh, momentum. So what conservation of charge means is charge is quantized. This means that charges exist in specific values that are multiple multiples of the elementary charge. So the best way to explain it is um, you can't have half an electron, or you can't have half of a proton. That doesn't exist. As of, yeah, we'll get to modern, and then we'll talk about that. But anyways, as you know of right now, you can't have one and a half electrons, and you can't have two and a half protons, or three-fourths of a proton. Uh, you have to have equal amounts of protons and electrons, or whole numbers, I should say, of protons and electrons. Electrons, well, electrons, and which means they are all multiples of this value right here, that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. They're all multiples of that elementary charge. So, for example, in the problem below, I ask, if I have three electrons on a metal sphere, what is the total charge? Well, I get the answer by saying three times... 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And 3 times 1.6 is 4.8, but I said there's an electron, so it has to be negative. So I get 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now, I want you to do this in your notes, and I'll show you the answer after. But uh, example. Which charge is not correct? Now remember, if charge is quantized, which means you can only have whole numbers of the elementary charge, and by whole numbers I mean like multiples of that 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Um, which charge is not correct? Which one can't exist? And this is actually a region's question. So the first one is obviously an elementary charge. So that's out. 3.2 is times 10 to the negative 19 is just twice of 1.6, so that's out. Um, let's see, does 8 work? So if I multiply that by 5, yeah, if I multiply it by 5, 5 times 1.6 is 8, so the answer is this guy, and it's because it's not a multiple of negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, or positive 1.6. I actually didn't say if the charge was an electron or a proton. How am I doing on time? Okay, so I got about maybe 30 seconds, which in that time, I'm going to quickly introduce you to the electrostatic force. Just like the force due to gravity between two objects, you actually have the electrostatic force between two charges. You've seen this equation before, you've calculated this equation before, but for the force due to gravity between two masses. So 
Now we have the, a similar equation where we have the electrostatic force between two charges. So if I have an electron and a proton next to each other and they have a certain amount of charge, I can figure out um, the electrostatic force between them. In class, we're actually going to do that using the same activity we did for force due to gravity, and then you're going to compare the two values. So um, F of E is electrostatic force. Q1 is the first charge to the unit's coulombs. Q2 is the second charge to the unit Q is coulombs. And once again, R is the distance between the charges. And please remember um, that the uh, it, that inverse square law also applies here, which we'll go into. And if you haven't watched my video, watch the video about how to solve mathematical relationships. Um, that is in the notes or in the homeworks as well. Okay. Uh, one thing that I did not write down on here for some unknown reason is K. K is the electrostatic constant. And that value is in your reference table. And I don't have one right in front of me, so look it up on your reference table and write it on your notes. I'll add it to the next time notes. Um, I believe it's... If I remember off the top of my head, it's 9.11 times 10 to the negative, is it 11? Newtons times meter squared over Coulomb squared. I am not 100% sure on that. So let's go look at a reference table and see if I'm right. Grabbing a reference table. Okay, okay. Oh, geez, I am totally off. Oh, 9.11 was the mass of an electron. Go, Mr. Hunter. So, um, K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th newtons times meter squared over coulomb squared. Also, ladies and gentlemen, remember when you're writing this formula out for LEPA, you should be telling me the units on that guy so that you don't miss that credit. Okay, I'll see you in class with this when it's due.